Kenny Brooks looking on to see if his team can bounce back. As you said, they had a 10-game win streak snapped on Thursday, losing on the road at Notre Dame. And they were just, Notre Dame took it to him right from the start. And he has said he needed to get an aggressive attitude again. Olivia Semiel had the rebound. And it will go the way of UVA. Kamora Johnson, as you said, one of the top freshmen in the ACC, and her numbers have just continued to get better for Virginia as the season has gone on. Goes against one of the top shot blockers in the ACC, though. Kitley stuffing Johnson on that attempt. Amor on the other end for three. Well, there's that aggressiveness he was looking for right off the start. You know, come down, attack, be in attack mode. He felt they were on their heels a little bit last time they played. Georgia Amor averaging 18 points per game. She and Kitley, one of the best duos in the country. Johnson for three with the answer. And she's a much improved three-point shooter the last month. She started out the year struggling from the three-point line, but has got progressively better in that area. And they need her to do that. They've been struggling as a team at the three-point line. Cam Taylor out on the floor. Missed the first matchup this season in Blacksburg. See the starting five for Virginia Tech. It's been pretty consistent with Samuel being in there now for the last 12 games. Amor drives and is fouled. Well, that's one thing Virginia right now cannot afford is to have Kamar Johnson in foul trouble. An early foul like that makes you a little nervous as a coach as they need to have her be on the floor for 30 plus minutes. Yeah, one thing that Coach Mox does have is a, a pretty deep bench. She plays a lot of players, however. <laughs> That's the one you want on the floor yeah. as much as you she possibly can. We're deep can. in a lot of areas, but point guard, we want her on the floor. <laughs> Amor good for the second. And a slight change to the Virginia starting lineup. It is their senior night. So Cade and Lawson, the senior, making the first start of the season. Along with Paris Clark, Cam Taylor, Johnson, and Brunel also being honored on senior night. Well, another thing about that first game, Cam Taylor didn't play, and that was another body inside to throw at Elizabeth Kitley, and they were a little shorthand in that area. They're hoping she can make a difference in that regard. And she really has. Virginia comes into this one having won four of the last six, and she's been a big part of that. Well, you'll see defensively here as Virginia Tech matches up, they start with King uh, guarding Kamar Johnson, put some size on her, because they like to do a lot of switching. So she can be that kind of glue defender and help out switching on to bigger players. Sam Brunel, a Virginia native, joining the Virginia Cavaliers after she spent three seasons at Notre Dame. This is her second year with Virginia. Coming back home, if you will. Clark in the corner, short for three, but gets her own rebound. Alexia Smith, the player who had been starting the last three, on the bench, good dish inside, and Taylor is fouled. So right there, that's kind of a microcosm of what, what Virginia wants to do, this high ball screen, attack in the paint, get their guards downhill to the basket, see if they can put pressure on Kitley in the front line, maybe get in foul trouble like that play. Um, they're, not a, they're not a great perimeter shooting team, so they rely on getting to the basket a little bit more. They play off the dribble a lot, not through the post. And Taylor, typically a very good free throw shooter, close to 84% on the season, misses the first. Gets a little help from the friendly home rim. And Cam has her first point of the game. This is the other thing that's a little bit different. Last time they played, Virginia didn't really press until late in the game. Uh, they've come out aggressively after free throws right away today, trying to put pressure on the, on the ball. Well, and Virginia Tech has had some issues on this end of the floor. That's the third turnover for the Hokies already. Again, both teams looking to be aggressive. Virginia right now trying to overplay post catches, catches at the top of the floor, try to push Virginia Tech off their comfort spots. Again, trying to get penetration. 
And that is a large part of what Virginia does. They want to go downhill and attack. Carly Wenzel, who just came into the game for Virginia Tech, picks up the foul. Virginia losing on the road at Duke on Thursday. Blue Devils were in a tight one today at North Carolina. The Tar Heels eventually prevailing in that one. Those two teams splitting the season series. And that's how you execute on the inbounds. Really, really good back screen to get Brunel freed up on the cuts of the basket. 6-4, Virginia out in front. Kitley. Not gonna have as easy a time of it. It doesn't look like here today. She had 20 points in the first half in the first meeting between these two teams. Well, it was interesting. Virginia's intent the first time they played was to double her once she dribbled the ball. Uh, but she didn't dribble it that much in the game. She was able to catch it a lot more comfortable spots and turn and shoot. Already she's struggling to even to get a touch of the basketball. Six possessions, four turnovers for the Hokies. Johnson gets past Amor. Smith now into the game. Hits her first shot. Alexia Smith was away, had to leave to go to a funeral after a death in the family. Just got back late last night. Looking no worse for the wearers. She has her first basket and now a rebound. Taylor working against Kitley. Battling in the post. Gets the offensive rebound and puts it back. Well, if they can get to the, to the lane area like they have so far and get second shots, it's one thing to get there, but I know Kenny Brooks was talking about we can't give them extra ones. 7-0 run by the Cavaliers. Samuel. If it feels loud in here, it is. The upper deck is open. Typically, that's not the case. Taylor shoots a pretty good percentage from three. Doesn't shoot that often, but 55% conversion rate. Kitley fouled, going to the free throw line. There's no need for anybody to foul her on her jump shot. Taylor she's, committed she's the foul. Great length, and she creates space by stepping back on her shot like that. She fades. It's hard to get at her. She gets those fouls by people tapping her on the elbow. Kitley averaging 24.2 points per game in conference play. That leads the league, as do her 11.4 rebounds. She's she's a, yeah, and she's a 77, 78% free throw shooter, so you don't want to put her on the line that often either. There's a rebound for Kitley off the miss by Clark. Those were Kitley's first points, by the way, on the last possession. Might have been only the second time she was able to touch the ball. Matilda Eck, haven't really talked about her much, but the Michigan State transfer has become a big part of what Virginia Tech has done this season. Samuel, the grad transfer from Wake Forest. Good positioning there by London Clarkson to not allow Kitley to get the rebound. Johnson was off and running. Ball out of bounds, going the other direction. The Virginia Cavaliers getting the start they wanted here at home, leading number five, Virginia Tech by three. Greatness is a feeling, a moment. In Charlottesville, Top Dog Night. Great promotion going on. It is also a whiteout. A lot of the Virginia fans dressed in white for this final home game of the regular season for the Cavaliers. The ACC Women's Basketball Tournament coming up this week in Greensboro. We know Virginia Tech is going to be number one. And Virginia either be the 11 or the 12 seed. Depends and, and, on this game and that Florida State Clemson game and, that's and, and going on. And playing off that picture, you and I are going to try to get as many corny jokes, dog jokes? And fun jokes in there as we can today. <laughs> but don't be telling everybody my no, game no. plan. Because my kids will call me dad joke stuff. So. <laughs> so what does Virginia Tech, other than just taking care of the ball, need to get going on this end of the floor? They've got a lot of subs in. Is Kitley? <laughs> well, that's yeah, a good idea. Kitley would be a good idea. Yeah. The other 
thing, that, that's a great pass out of the double team for Virginia Tech because one of Virginia's plans is to double team Amor and the other guards in pick and roll situations and make them have to swing the ball to get a play made. Uh, but a good, great possession last time to get it all the way swung around and find Kittley one-on-one. -on -one. Clark. Claire Strack. Baker on the floor. Johnson, though, taking it away for Virginia. Clark will try another drive. That is just a tough shot. That might have been a shot. None called on the floor. Kitley calling for it. Clarkson goes falling to the floor. Johnson first to the basketball. Up and in. And again, the turnovers. You can't have, you can't play a first quarter and play, you know, six, seven minutes with five turnovers. Five in the game for Johnson. Shot up for a long two from Clara Strack. Kitley with the offensive board. She's got seven. We got a lot of coaches right behind us, too. <laughs> what a way to welcome you here to Charlottesville, Virginia. The Virginia Cavaliers in this Commonwealth clash against number five Virginia Tech, leading the Hokies by four in the first quarter. Jen Hildreth, Mike Tebow on the call. And a crowd that could be the most ever to watch a Virginia women's basketball game on hand. They've opened the upper decks. It is a great atmosphere here today. And the Cavaliers not disappointing the fans the way they have started off this ball game. I mean, they've, they've come right from the opening jump with an aggressive mindset on both ends of the floor. They've been trying to attack offensively. They've been pushing catches out defensively making every play that Virginia Tech has tried to make a tough one. Amor left it a little short. Georgia Amor, Kayla King, Liz Kitley, Claire Strack, Matilda Eck, the players on the floor for Virginia Tech. There's the trap again. And the defense has been so good for Virginia to start this game. The drive off the side of the backboard. Sam Brunel on her senior day with the rebound. Kamora Johnson, one of the top freshmen in the ACC. Has five points in the game, left that one a little short. Both teams coming off losses on Thursday night. Virginia Tech on the road at Notre Dame snapped a 10 game winning streak for the regular season champs. And Virginia losing at Duke. Alexia Smith able to get all the way down the floor for two. And the officials are kind of letting them play a little bit because there's been a, a fair amount of contact. Let's go, D! Six point Virginia lead. Cavaliers really played Virginia Tech well in Blacksburg earlier this season. Virginia Tech wound up winning that game. Really based on the third quarter. That was where the Hokies took the lead for good and never looked back. Yeah, it was a 17-5 third quarter, and I don't think Virginia scored till there were six minutes into the quarter in that game. Liz Kitley in that game, 33 points, 18 rebounds. Georgia Amor also had a double-double. Johnson had a big game. Kitley from the elbow. Offensive rebound is good by the freshman Strack. Well, that's one thing that Virginia Tech can do a little bit more today is they pay so much attention in their defense to Amor and Kitley and trying to double and rotate that you have offensive rebounding lanes if you're aggressive enough with it. Jillian Brown into the paint, walked. This is the first turnover by Virginia on the other end. Turnovers have really been a problem to start this game for Virginia Tech. They have six. Six, and, they, and they've been, you know, ones that just uncommon for them. You don't usually see them throwing it over Kitley's head or throwing it out of bounds on a cross-court pass. There's the aggressive trap again. Can they move it quick enough to find somebody? As you cannot leave shooters open, and you know what? In that Chicago Maroon, they can all 
shoot, including <laughs> Karis Baker. Karis Baker just keeps getting better. I, they're really, really excited about what the future is for her. She's a big that can shoot the three. Amor will not get the shot off to end the first quarter, and it is a one point. Made him change the capacity <laughs> on it. Afterward, and then in 2009 with Tennessee here at John Paul Jones Arena, that's the current attendance record, and let me tell you, that could be in jeopardy today. I think they're going to break it today. I'm looking up in the upper deck, and it's pretty darn full. It is a testament to what Coach Mox is building with this group at Virginia. Kitley knocks down another two for Virginia Tech. She is just so hard to stop. Nine points in the game now. Really, really, really nice isolation play for her that they worked on at shoot around this morning. They're so used to people screening across from her in that play, they popped her right back out to the same side. Turnover by the Cavaliers gives it back to Virginia Tech. Hokies now with a one-point lead. Virginia led by as many as six in the first quarter. Which is a good stat for Virginia because they've struggled in conference play with first quarters. Uh, first and third have been tough. Seven on the shot clock. Amor, crossover, triple. She has got that down, that little Right to left, step back. She creates space. Seven points in the game for Amor. Virginia has missed its last four and turns this one over. Kayla King, one of the best defenders on this Virginia Tech team, won't get a more open look than that. She's really been struggling from the three-point line. Yeah, George Amor, I mean, you know, if you watch, I hate to compare it to the men's game, but if you watch Luka Doncic, this is his move. Step back, going left, right in that same spot on the floor. That's a great way when you're at her size and you're undersized as a guard, you need to create a little extra space to get a shot off. That's become a great move for her. Amor, maybe, as this is a travel call on this play, Amor defense. I know Liz Kitley's a two-time ACC Player of the Year, and I believe she will be the third time, and it's deserved. However, there you could make an argument for Amor being the most important player on this Virginia Tech team. Yeah, and your point guard is that, that was a travel. That's a, that's a really good call by the official. That extra hop um, after you come down is not allowed. Hokies on a 10-0 run. Take this four-point lead. Kitley, 11. They have really come up with some ideas to how to get her some space without the double teams coming easily to her. Open side of the floor, that's two plays in a row they've run for her on that side of the floor. Johnson kicks it to the corner, Brown off the mark from three. Kitley, shot fake. She had a chance to keep going. King looking inside, and Eric Bruden has called a foul. Well, it's interesting, and we talked to Coach Brooks about that this morning. They have seen just about every defense that you can see devised to stop Kitley. He said, you know, he told her the other day that she's been his biggest challenge to coach, not because, <laughs> you know, she's hard to coach, but they've seen so many different defenses against her that they have had to really be a little bit more creative as a coaching staff to help her out a little bit against all the double and triple teams. Play the chess match. We yep. think they're going to do this, so we need to be ready with this. Cam Taylor has been a bit quiet, had gone to the bench. See if she can make an impact in this game. Cam was out four games, including the first matchup against the Hokies in Blacksburg. So Taylor headed to the free throw line. King, after picking up her second foul, will go to the bench. And she really didn't need to commit that foul. You gotta trust a little bit more Kitley behind you, who was actually gonna block the shot anyway. 
Well, with the ACC tournament just a week and a half away on the men's side, our last regular season Tuesday, doubleheaders especially big. At 7 Eastern, number nine, North Carolina hosting Notre Dame. Then Georgia Tech squaring off against Wake Forest right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Here's the press again. Right now, it's just to try to make Virginia Tech use more time on the clock. Eventually, they may come back to the full court. There's, it. There's the pass oh, again. I there it is. Look out for the between the legs pass from Kitley to Amor. Doesn't immediately result in a basket. It does, however, draw the foul. We saw that same pass in our opening <laughs> uh, on the video from the last time these two played. But she, she works on that in practice. Uh, keeps her from exposing the ball to her defender. Here it is. Here comes uh, the pass. Kitley catches it. Oh, this is the one before, sorry. We get a chance, we will go back to it. It was worth another look. Six on the shot clock, Amor, Great pass. wide open Kitley. Amor just laughs on that, because she lives for those kind of plays. <laughs> she's, she's often laughing, I think. That is a player who really enjoys herself out on the floor. You can see it in the way that she plays. Reigning ACC Tournament MVP is the Hokies won the title in Greensboro last year for the first time. And they will go in as the one seed this year in Greensboro. First time ever for that. It's been five and a half minutes without a field goal for Virginia. Another downhill drive right in the middle of the lane. Between Clark and Smith and Johnson, they just keep trying to go to the basket. Clark driving right against Kitley. That is Kitley's first foul. And Clark had a big game, 18 points in Blacksburg to start off February. She has three and makes it a three-point game. Here's the press again. the shot clock, Amor. Clark tries to get back over. And Eck, the offensive rebound. Ball moving quickly, now back to Amor. Strack not liking what she saw inside. Amor, deep three. You credit that, a pretty good defensive possession for Virginia. Johnson. Good patience by the freshman to get it inside to Clarkson. And that's a, that's a thing that a lot of young point guards don't do. They hurry on that play. She took her time and waited for the post player to get the position she needed. Maura Johnson, the ACC Rookie of the Week this week, averaging 17 and a half in conference play, and Amor misses another. Johnson. Let's it go for three. Neither team shooting the ball particularly well from three to start this game. Virginia Tech three for 12, Virginia two for eight. Good help, and it came quickly from Clarkson. I feel like a lot of the threes in this game are a little bit rushed today, you know, particularly by the non-great three-point shooters. So this is Johnson just waiting patiently, finds Clarkson down inside. Great layup, get a little bit of momentum back for the Cavaliers. This is it, one play. This so last Sunday, Liz Kelly did this. All right, a little between the legs pass to George Amor. Got it back and maybe that was just a little foreshadowing for what we were gonna see today, because earlier, there it goes again, coach. She liked it so much last week. Why not do it again? And you know what we're gonna call that on Hot Dog Day? We're gonna call that a little relish there on the hot go. dog. How about there that? There you go. I don't mind it. Kitley 
helping this Virginia Tech team to the number one seed in the ACC tournament, the regular season title. She's got 13 points in this game today, but really has been defended pretty well considering. Yep, I mean, she's she's gotten most of her points when she's been able to get isolated a little bit. Um, the double team there was right on time. Virginia Tech, of course, thinking about other seeding as well. Currently projected as a top 16 seed. Get a chance to host in the NCAA tournament. So important. Taylor blocked by Kitley. It's a jump ball on the putback attempt. Well, with all the turnovers and the the, the physical play, it hasn't had a flow to it for a little bit now in this quarter. Let's see if we get back to the movement here that Virginia Tech likes. Travel and another turnover, so that three will not count. It's the ninth turnover by Virginia Tech. We have 342 to play in the second quarter. They average 12 turnovers per game on the season. Yeah, I think Coach Mox has got to be really, really happy with what they've done. Uh, defensively to speed Virginia Tech up and, draw, and force these turnovers. Clarkson. Four points in the game for London. Clarkson, Virginia, back out in front. And meanwhile, it's been over three minutes without a point for the fifth-ranked Hokies. Highest ranking of the season for Virginia Tech. Got up to number five. Corson had the loss on Thursday. Snapping a 10-game winning streak. Amor working the shot fake to perfection. She's just got cleverness about her. She knows that she's got to make people fly by her, draw fouls, do all those things, and she's gotten more clever each year she's played. 10 points in the game for Amor, including three triples. There's way too much time to get started on this play set for Virginia. They didn't start a play till there was 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Two now for Johnson, passes back out to Clark. Oh, my. Well, just like you draw it up. Samuel and Virginia Tech. Now down a point. Kitley is fouled. She'll go to the free throw line. As you said earlier, Kitley is a good free throw shooter. Yeah, you just you just can't. Oh my goodness. That 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 <laughs> shot's just it's a prayer. And you can't anything do. You play great defense for the whole possession. Somebody makes a shot, you say, okay, we'll move on. Those are the, those are not the ones you dwell on. Cam Taylor just picked up her second personal foul. Looks like she's going to stay on the floor for Virginia. Kitley on the free throw line. First one good for Kitley. And a reminder that the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament starts on Wednesday. It's finally here. That's in Greensboro. We will have you covered all the way up to the championship game on ACCN. First round coverage starts at 12.30 Eastern with our Nothing But Net crew on Wednesday. We also might be setting a record in this game for held balls, too. Uh, there's, because of the physical play around the boards, you're finding four or five people around loose balls and rebounds right now. And by the way, we're going to keep an eye on the fouls, being told that that last foul actually was charged to London Clarkson and not Cam Taylor. So actually that's good news for Virginia. Yeah, I think that's why they, Clarkson ended up being the one that subbed out. That would make sense. Under two to play, great first half in this Commonwealth clash between the Hoos and the Hokies. Three ties, five lead changes. Clark. points for Paris Clark members. She had 18 in the first meeting with the Hokies. 
Well, I think with her and Kamora Johnson, if those two can continue at the rate that they have this year, they're really set at guard for the next couple of years here. Future looking bright for Virginia. Clark just a sophomore, Johnson freshman. Travel called against X before she could get it inside, and that is 10 turnovers for Virginia Tech. I kind of think I know what they'll be talking about at halftime. <laughs> Meanwhile, can Virginia find a way to hang on? Look, this team has already upset three ranked opponents this season. Round and out for Johnson Taylor. Back up to two and one more. Virginia Tech experimenting a little bit today. That was kind of a little bit of a matchup zone. They've been trying to make the this great offensive rebound and going right at the best shot blocker, just get right into her body, make her foul you. And that is two fouls. Now the foul actually being called on Amor, so it's her first. Not on Kitley. They dodged the bullet on that one. Now that would have been the second on Kitley. Eight points now for Taylor. Five point Virginia lead. The Hokies have won five in a row in the series. Kitley fouled before she could really get into that shot motion, it looked like. Brunel's second personal, fourth team foul. Virginia in the zone on the baseline out of bounds play. Seven seconds different, shot clock, game clock. Who wants the rebound? Virginia Tech had it. And walked. This is as rattled in terms of taking care of the basketball as this Virginia Tech team, I think, has looked all season. They just, they, they just are out of sorts when they can't get their normal things in their offense. And Coach Marks told us this morning that they were gonna try to make this an uncomfortable game. Well, I'd say they've succeeded in they've that succeeded. so far. And Virginia with a five. In the bigger picture for this Virginia Tech team, I think that is a fair concern going forward. It cannot be just those two, no matter how good they are. And, and most nights, in fairness to them, Eck has been a part of that offense and been a thing. But they need one more. They need somebody off their bench. They need Kayla King. They need somebody to step up and take the pressure off Amor and Kitley to make more shots. Because in the games they've struggled, they haven't gotten enough production. Kamora Johnson has the first two points for Virginia. She's got 10 now. And by the way, I just want to give my partner here a shout out. He actually took a bite and was eating that hot dog. That's it. It's because you know how to multitask, you know, general I manager. I promised I would take a bite, and so I did. Won a championship in the WNBA. He knows how to do it. And then he made it all the way through those highlights, too. Kitley adding to her highlights, 16 points in the game. She continues to get hers. She, she, when she can get it away from where they can come and double team, then she'll have success. It's when she catches it in a crowd and can't get out of the crowd. I think Kitley. I'm still paying for that hot okay. dog, though. <laughs> it's worth it, though, right? I'm, oh, yeah. Just wait till timeout. Five to shoot. Now, as Clark drives against Amor, gets the rebound. Clark has been so aggressive. Ten points now for the Arizona transfer. When she and uh, Johnson can get to the point where they both feel really consistent from three and driving, they'll be able to play off each other so much better. Brunel having to defend Kitley one-on-one, -on -one. that's trouble. The person that was supposed to double team, Cam Taylor, fell, got tripped up and was laying in the lane. There was no double team there to help. 18 points now for Kitley. 
Taylor answers on the I other I do end. not know how that went in. <laughs> <laughs> Talked to Cam before the game today. Has a lot of family here. Well, she lost her mother a couple years ago. She's her biggest basketball fan. She's going to be holding a picture of her mom when she's honored for senior day at the end of this game. So I know she's playing with a lot of emotion. That's a tough foul right there for Virginia Brunel getting her third. Yeah, so Brunel with that third foul will head to the bench. Well, this was the big spot in the game when they played last time. The third quarter was 17 to 5, Virginia Tech. We, Virginia had a lid on the basket, couldn't find a way. Foul called on that play. Crowd doesn't like it. You don't want to be in early foul trouble. You, one of the big things coaches preach all the time is there's a race to the bonus. Don't lose that race. Second on Taylor. Amor, a tough shot. And London Clarkson still down immediately. Referee Teresa Stuck signals. I got screened off, so I couldn't see what happened. Uh, timeout, excuse me, but take some time here just to check on Clarkson. And that just went down awkwardly after that drive by Amor. She just subbed in for Brunel, so she doesn't look like it. she wants to put a lot of weight on it right now. She's the help defender. Oh, she lands uh, partly on Amor and just can't quite get a balanced landing. And Clarkson, one of five seniors being honored today at Virginia. Taylor another, as was Brunel. Taylor Lauterbach into the game. 6-7 grad transfer from Kansas State for the Cavaliers. Shot from three is off the mark by Lawson. Drive to the basket, Amor so quick. Forces defenses to try to keep up with her without fouling. She's so good when teams are trying to switch or hedge on her to split the double team. She's got a great crossover and just gets, you know, with, you know when you're small, sometimes that becomes an advantage when you can get through that little gap. That was the third foul on Pam Taylor on that drive by Amor. And if you want to see more of Georgia Amor and this Virginia Tech team, well, they're going to be a part of our next All Access, the ACC Life that premieres tomorrow night. Virginia Tech, a part of that, along with Pitt Gymnastics, Miami Women's Golf. You'll get unprecedented access into the lives of these student athletes, coaches, staff, parents, all of them. 7 Eastern after ACC PM right here on ACC Network and the app. Again, Virginia just puts their head down and drives it at the paint and try to see what they can get out of it. You know, Coach Brooks talked this morning about you have to try to keep from fouling on these plays. But they are being aggressive and they're just trying to draw body contact. And that was Kayla King. Mike had just picked yep. up her third personal for Virginia Tech. It's going to be a game of attrition at this point for the two teams. Who can keep people on the floor going into the fourth quarter? Lawson, a 72% free throw shooter, makes the second. That's her first point of the night. Not relied on too much for her scoring, just averages about two points per game. But she has been with this Virginia program for all four years. Eck, no points in the game yet for Eck, but Amor has three more. That's a really good play that I don't think uh, Eck could have made when she first came into college. She was strictly a spot-up shooter. Putting the ball on the floor, creating for somebody else, that's a big improvement for her. Eck, who is sitting at 999 career points, has an added a point, does have some assists, and Kitley is down under the basket in some pain. Her family 
certainly concerned in the stands. Liz Kitley on the floor for Virginia Tech. We'll give you an update when we come back to Charlottesville. You know Signorama as your local sign shop. The freshman who's come on in her place will step to the line to shoot the one free throw and everybody thinking about number 33 and if we'll see her again in this game and what exactly her status is. It's just one of those freak ones that you see. She came down on the foot and just rolled it. So we'll certainly keep you updated as we get any word on Kaylee who went off the floor, get looked at. Certainly hope nothing too serious for the two-time ACC Player of the Year. King's fourth. Yeah, that was quick by Kayla King and really costly. Second team foul for the Hokies. Immediately, that'll send Kayla King back to the bench. No points in the game yet, but she is their best perimeter defender. Now on the bench with four fouls and a one-point game. Yeah, she was the one assigned at the start of the game to guard Kamora Johnson. Clarkson having some trouble, gets it to Johnson, drives, good! Well, Virginia's got to take advantage right now of a shot blocker not being in the lane and going at the basket like they just did. And it is not very often you see Virginia Tech without Kitley on the floor. She averages almost 35 minutes per game. Samuel ran right into Johnson, playing some good defense. Seven to shoot. Amor unleashes another three. And admires it. I love it when she holds her follow through <laughs> like that. I Five love it. Five triples in the game. You best admire that, Georgia Amor. 19 points for the Aussie. Clark back to Johnson. There was some contact there and a foul. Well, Georgia Amor finds ways to get open. That time, just a quick, the defense was late. She lays a quick pull up, splashes another one. If one of the questions hounding this Hokey team coming into tonight was, could they be more than Amor and Kitley? Well, the answer so far in this game has been no, not no. really. I mean, the graphic there is stark. 39 points, six points from everybody else. Usually, Matilda Eck is part of that. Um, and she's only gotten one field goal attempt today. Um, they need to find somebody else, and maybe this is the time they got to have somebody else step up. Kitley going off after she came down awkwardly. It was fouled right about the six-minute mark in this quarter. Clark is fouled as she drives. First foul on Matilda Eck. And with Clark. Ten points in the game for Clark. Now 11. Got some men's basketball coming up. Our last regular season Tuesday doubleheader has number nine, North Carolina hosting Notre Dame at seven, then Georgia Tech and Wake Forest right here in ACCN and the ESPN app. Well, if you're going to... If you're going to defend Virginia's guards, Clark and Johnson, you've got to keep them from getting in the middle of the lane. Take away their strong hand. Make them do something else. Make them shoot long jumpers. Strack walked with the basketball. Virginia Tech had done a better job of taking care of the ball to start this quarter. That was a real issue. 11 yep. turnovers in the first half. They're really searching right now to find something offensively where Georgia Amor doesn't have to take every shot. Clark had two tall defenders around her in Eck and Strack. And then Amor gets low, gets to the other way, goes low on Lawson to draw the foul. 
And that is a 15 foul for Virginia. So Amor, who's a very good free throw shooter, will head to the line. This is good defense here. Two people trying to take away the, the shot and the pass. Did a great job of getting the deflection with their length. And then you get it to your best player going down the floor. And you talked about that race to the bonus. Well, now for four minutes, the yep. best free throw shooting team in the ACC will be going to the line with every foul. And that's a flip of the switch from last time because when these two teams played before, Virginia Tech only shot eight free throws to 21 for Virginia. And that kept Virginia in the game last time. Alexia Smith. Out to Odessa Noyan. Noyan really had to play some big minutes when Cam Taylor was injured earlier this season. Taylor on the bench with three fouls. Baker tries to bank, bank was in almost three. Open. Johnson, somehow that ball gets to Clark, who draws the foul on the drive. <laughs> kind of, uh, with, the, with the crowd right now, it's hard to tell who the home team is. <laughs> there are a lot of Hokie fans here at John Paul Jones. a great penetration and pass. Johnson might have got away with the walk, but this is what Clark does. If you can get her, her ahead of steam with the right hand, she's going to get in the paint. And now both teams in the bonus. And to be fair, Virginia also a very good free throw shooting team. They rank second behind Virginia Tech overall in games this season from the line. So this really could be a big difference maker in a game that has been as tight as this one, tied for the sixth time now. Baker and off the mark from three. She has a pretty looking shot, but that was a pretty miss. Clark could not convert or get herself to the line on that trip. Amor travels. Thirteen turnovers for Virginia Tech. That is one more than their season average. I think Virginia right now, if they want to get what they want, they can't just take random shots from the perimeter. They got to do what got them the lead. They got to get in the paint. They got to drive it, get to the free throw line. I know they'd like to make more threes, but that's not their strength. They need to get themselves at the basket. Johnson, Noyan, open in the Two drives by their guards set up the penetration. Defense had to help find somebody in the paint to get a shot. And let's not discount what a win here would mean for Virginia. Think about the confidence this team would go into Greensboro with, knowing they just knocked off the regular season champs. Who else might they beat? Always a tough road when you have to play on that first day first of the day, ACC tournament, haul. but you never know what can happen. By the way, Virginia locked in at the 11 seed, in case you missed it at halftime, we'll update you on where things stand. But this game, keeping all eyes on the floor right now as Strack scores to tie it up again. Open three. And gets a great bounce. A great bounce. <laughs> the Northwestern transfer, transfer using a little bit of glass, a little bit of rim, a little bit of touch to finish off that three. Strat calling for it inside. There is a foul called, though, before she can catch the basketball. Well, Virginia's going to make their move here with their with their regular post players. They're coming back with their starters and Cam Taylor and Sam Burnell. Both of whom have three fouls. Probably a good time to, to bring them back. You've got a little bit of a lead. You can try to maybe open it up here. Um, just tell them, play without fouling. And in case you missed it, no Liz Kitley at the moment for Virginia Tech. The crowd hoping for some baking. Two missed free throws in a row by the Hokies. Not to be had. <laughs>
They burned the bacon that time, not going to get it. But that's why the crowd gets a little extra loud in this Commonwealth clash. I remember watching the game at Virginia Tech, <laughs> yeah. and they went crazy. Yeah, they got it a few times. Taylor making the crowd go crazy here on her home floor on her senior night. A dozen points for Cam Taylor, who has been averaging 17 points a game since her return. Amor, silky smooth on the finish for 23. She's got such a quick first step that if you don't have that second defender in the lane all ready to help, they don't get there quick enough. Still have not seen Liz Kitley emerge from the locker room for Virginia Tech. The Hokies may be going down the stretch without her at the moment, and Virginia trying to take advantage. Well, we, you said it about three minutes ago. You know, let's see how many people are going to go to the free throw line before the end of the quarter. It's been a constant parade at both ends. Uh, th both of these teams got to approach the fourth quarter a little bit differently and not get themselves in early foul trouble. You hear the crowd? You see the reason. Hokie is well represented here in Charlottesville, just at the mere sight of Liz Kitley on the bench. She acts like walking back out like she's going to be back on the court. We'll see. She went down six minutes to go in this quarter, landed awkwardly. Trainer just came and talked to Coach Brooks about uh, what was going on with her, and he nodded, so we'll see what the fourth quarter brings here. Well, at the moment, Cam Taylor and Virginia playing a much better third quarter than what they did up in Blacksburg. It is just a quarter that's been separated by one point, and it has resulted in a four-point Virginia lead, but Virginia Tech with a chance for the last say in quarter number three. Amor off the screen from Strack. Strack puts it back in. The freshman playing some big minutes in Kitley's absence. The heave will not go, but it's a two-point game in the Commonwealth Clash for regular season champs, the fifth-ranked team in the country on a two-point lead. Virginia Tech starting in the zone this quarter. Trying to take away some of the penetration that Virginia's had in the last quarter. Kitley on the bench, but not back out on the floor for Virginia Tech. Both teams start the quarter with a turnover. Brown drives and is fouled by Baker. And both teams really shot the ball well in that third quarter. Both teams. Uh, uh, one at Virginia at 58%, Virginia Tech at 60%. Total difference from that <laughs> ugly shooting that we saw early in the game. Well, something that is beautiful to see are all these fans. In fact, it is a record for women's basketball here at Virginia. 11,975 setting the record. Come on, bring on hot dog night there all you the go. time here in Charlottesville. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps when you're playing one of your biggest rivalries. What a way to finish not only the ACC regular season, but a day in ACC women's hoops that's seen two games go to overtime. It just continues to show the depth of this conference, but that looked like tears in the eyes of Liz Kitley there on the bench. Certainly some concern in that regard. Again, we do not have anything yeah. official. We just know she went off after landing awkwardly about midway through the third quarter. Amor knocks down her sixth triple of the night. He made sure everybody knew about it, too. That's Here we are back in the 2 3 zone. Match up on the first pass to the middle. Drive not finished by Brown, who already has a couple of 
points in the quarter from the free throw line. Virginia hanging on to a one point lead. Amor, dipsy doo, won't drop. Taylor, big rebound. Trying to shake it off, running back down. She collided with one of her own teammates trying to get the ball. I wonder if it's Kamora Johnson time for Virginia. Speaking, oh, speaking into existence. She gets the assist anyway. Jillian Brown knocking it down. <laughs> Eight points in the game for Brown. And Virginia getting a big three. Making a two possession game. Six on the shot clock. Amor and Virginia Tech really having to work. Amor with six made threes, one off her career high. Here is Johnson. Seven assists, 12 points in the game for the freshman. How about that bounce pass? So oh, Taylor will want those would be two points back. That was a perfect spot to get it against the zone. Get in the lane in the middle. Cam Taylor really came on strong in that fourth quarter and the win at Louisville had 22 points in that game. Virginia upset the cards. First unranked team to win at Louisville. King from the corner. Baker a big rebound. Not this time, but another offensive rebound. The possession continues. Once, twice, three times to Kayla King, the lady. That must feel awesome to her right now. When you just, you need to see one go in. Three times the charm. Get an offensive rebound, swing it back, shoot it another one, pure as can be. When you're great, your game does the talking. In the ace team they beat in the regular season, and by the way, by finishing 11, they were gonna be 11 or 12, Coach. That means they're down on the other side of the bracket of Virginia Tech, who of course is going in as the one seed and the regular season champs for the first time. The only thing about all that is, once the tournament starts, you almost forget about that because anything can happen with the top teams. Virginia Tech, the defending champs. And big question on everyone's mind, what is the status of Liz Kitley, the two-time ACC Player of the Year? She's been on the bench since leaving the floor with an apparent injury midway through the third quarter. Now the offense is bogged down here, so give it to Amor, let her shoot. That would be a <laughs> recipe for success, a career high tying seventh triple for Georgia Amor. Well, it's funny, you know, you, you, you get so used to certain players scoring that when you are stuck, you spend so much time looking for that player, you forget to do some other natural basketball things. Luckily, she's good enough to bail them out. 29 points for Amor. And Johnson drives the other way through traffic and is fouled. Well, when everything else is going wrong, the answer is throw it to George A. Moore, and this is what happens. The nice answer? simple play. Makes coaches and, and look really, really smart. It's A. Moore. <laughs> I like that. It has a nice ring to it. Johnson on the line. Gets them both. 14 now for Kamora Johnson. Been averaging 17 and a half in conference play. It's just continued to grow in every way in a big freshman season. Eighth tie of the night. King hit her last three-point attempt after missing her first five. Johnson feeling it. She just keeps going. She just attack, attack, attack. 16 points now for Johnson. Virginia 
back in the lead. Amor, open lane to the basket, has 31 now. Coach Mock is not happy because that was supposed to be an all-out trap on Amor on that play, and they let her turn the corner. And she's now tied her career high in both points and three-pointers made. Having to carry more of the load with Kitley out. Taylor, tough shot, what a rebound, pulled down by Caden Lawson. Senior made her first start of the season today. Johnson. We got a show. We got a real show. Kamara Johnson's going, hey. George Amor's coming in my building. I gotta, I gotta show out back. Johnson knows what this rivalry's all about. She's from here in Charlottesville. McDonald's All-American. Opted to continue her collegiate career in her hometown, but my goodness, Amor cannot be stopped. This is a great contest between those two right now. I know it's a team game, but the two of them are putting on a show. Taylor with the left. This, this is the Johnson one, just comfortable. Yeah, that's that's too easy. You can't, no pressure. Now, Amor, back at you the other way. And whatever you can do, I can do better. And this is where Virginia Tech misses Liz Kitley because that's a shot block a lot of times. And Cam Taylor took advantage of going right at them. Taylor missing the first meeting against the Hokies in Blacksburg, making her presence felt now. 17 points in the game for Taylor, along with four rebounds. This is another little piece of strategy right here by Kenny Brooks to try to get Georgia Amor off the ball to start the play. Let Carly Wenzel bring the ball up and let Amor play off the ball so she doesn't have to feel the pressure the entire possession. You can bet at some point the ball will wind up back in the hands of number five. Here she is. Would you leave her? An absolutely scorching performance from Georgia Amor. Bringing all the toppings on hot dog side here in Charlottesville. Mustard, ketchup, relish, she got it all. <laughs> but but you do all this help and you forget the best player. And George Amor said, no, no, you can't forget me. That's a bucket. What a game. A one point lead for Virginia. And as you said a moment ago, it has been a tremendous individual battle, a game within the game between the senior for Virginia Tech, Georgia Amor, and the freshman, Kamora Johnson. And the freshman obviously doesn't have the same number of points, but she's made her teammates better too. We've seen her make assists this half by getting in the paint and finding teammates, making the entry pass to post players. But as a coach, you lose it when you don't find the best player on the other team. And I know Coach Mox, that had to be part of that timeout. Whatever you do, do not leave Georgia Amor. Whatever you do. Meanwhile, Kamori Johnson, seven points in this quarter. Wondered if we'd start to see her impose her will a little bit more. A little bit harder with the zone right now, trying to take away her drives. See what the call is. Foul on Virginia Tech. That had Kenny Brooks hopping that over on his technical area. And that's our fourth team foul. Taylor going hard to the basket. Well, let's see what he cooked up with his timeout. Harris Clark guarding Amor at the moment. Amor, three more. Call the moving screen. One count. Great play they worked on this morning. So off the
elbow. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's a tough call. Uh, that's a tough call. It's a pretty good screen. The defender shoves you a little bit, and you end up with that that moving. You, your reaction as an offensive player is to turn and ball, find ball, it. Ball foul to see if the ball was released prior to the foul. Well, the officials are over at the monitor. See I know Eric they Bruton. tried to announce what they're looking at, but nobody yeah, in the building can hear, hear them. And we didn't hear it either. So to get a little clarification, we will let you know. I'll see if I can get one of the officials' attention. This could be a timing issue here of when the ball was released. The rule would be if, if Amor had shot the ball before the foul call, let's see here. No, no. That screen, that foul occurred before the shot in my estimation. Well, and that's tough anyway, because yeah. even if she did get it off, obviously the screen is what's keeping her defender away from her. Yeah, the rule reads though, Timing. Right. You get it off, but I, I don't think it was even close to being in the shooting motion. At the view, the call is confirmed. No basket. The ball will be put on the side out. Well, already, Virginia Tech has the record for the most points in an ACC game here at John Paul Jones Arena with 36. That would have been 39. Well, we still got enough time. <laughs> Two and a half to go. Who knows what can happen in this game that's had 11 lead changes and nine ties in the corner. Short from three. Taylor, a massive rebound. Johnson back to Taylor, wanting to go one on one, but just lost the basketball. Watson grabs it back for Virginia. And his foul. And he nips the bonus, so it's all the line. Wild play. Eventually winds up putting Lawson on the free throw line. One for three from the line today. Amor called for the foul. It was her second. Two point Cavalier lead. Well, I'll bet you that uh, Amor touches the ball. <laughs> Want to take that bet? I think she probably should <laughs> for Virginia Tech. But Wenzel, hey, she might not need to. Well, the defense sold out to try to keep the ball out of her hands. And the driving lane opened up. Wenzel tying it at 72. A record setting crowd of nearly 12,000 in the building today. The drive from Clarkson, another offensive rebound. Taylor had it. Clarkson, the baseline drive. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. That's a great drive. Great play to get the ball back. The senior showing up on senior day, but the freshman flashing her brilliance as well. season champs in the ACC. Well, well, this is a great steal. You know the ball's been trying to get back to Amor. You just jump in between the handoff. Great opportunity. Gives them a little bit of cushion now. And they have fouls to give still. Amor. A rare miss for Georgia Amor. And another big board for Cam Taylor. Well, now, if you're Virginia Tech, are you coming to foul early? Are you going to play it out right now? Crowd starting to make more noise as Clark will head to the free throw line on the foul. Clark is 73% free throw shooter. The free throw game is a hard one to play with both of these teams. 
And Clark so far, perfect from the line. Six for six. Great points. That they're going to try to get the ball to Amor so you can overplay her. You have to, if you're Virginia, make somebody else make a shot right now. You also have two fouls to give right now, so you can inbound it, take a foul, and make them take it out of bounds again. Georgia Amor with 36 points in the game. She is 8 of 14 from three. You're right, it is no secret that that is where Virginia yep. Tech would like to get the ball. I think this is just where you're going to find out if somebody else can make a big play. With King taking the ball out of bounds, watch for something for her off the ball after it's inbounded. Tough to even get the ball in. Good defense by the Cavaliers. Amor does wind up, but it goes for the tough two off the glass. And foul. She'll find a way to three one way or the other. Well, when you have two timeouts left, you can afford to take a couple twos like that because you can foul and get it back and advance it. What an incredible performance we are witnessing here today from Georgia Amor. 39 points. And a one possession game. Timeout Virginia, so Cavaliers can advance the ball. Well, the very first thing you are saying in, in, on the Virginia sideline is no matter what else, you just have to get the ball in bounds where you cannot be trapped easily. You know you're probably going to get fouled, so you hope that your best free throw shooters are the one catching the inbounds pass. You have timeouts to use if you can't get it in. They still have two timeouts. So an ideal possession here for Virginia. Looks Get it like into what? a best free throw shooter and have a secondary place to throw it if you get trapped. You might see Virginia Tech trap one time to see if they can get a steal. If they don't get the steal, then foul. Taylor, one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC. She's at almost 84% for the season. Clarkson tried to get it away to Lawson. And she's a pretty good free throw shooter, I think 73%. Yeah, that's a thing that, that really has been a strength for this Virginia team this season, as well as Virginia Tech. Both teams have shot the ball well from the line. And that's been the case in the game today, too. Virginia 15 of 17 from the line. I think that's the fifth foul. That's what they're talking about. Called on Strack, it does look like that's her fifth. So she's going to have to come off the floor. Come on. Come on. Strack, I don't think even realized that was her I don't think she knew she fouled out. Well, the freshman has had to really play some important minutes with Liz Kitley sidelined in this fourth quarter. Now, I'm not a doctor. The encouraging thing about seeing Kidley sitting over there is it's not, she doesn't have her ankle or her knee or anything wrapped in a big case of ice. And she did walk out here. Clarkson misses both, but the offensive rebound may be what saves Virginia on this possession. Well, just when we were touting how good both teams have shot the ball and over two trip. Well, this is another coach's nightmare. You do everything right, you get a team to miss both free throws, and then you give up an offensive rebound and have to foul again. Those, those kind of things are just kind of no-nos to winning. And now it might be in the head a little bit as, as Lawson steps to the line. So that's three straight misses for Virginia, leaving that door open. Four straight misses, and Virginia Tech with a timeout and the chance. They're going to advance it. They still have another timeout left if they need it. And plenty of time, 24.8 seconds. 
You have to think Amor's in there again somewhere. She opted for the drive last time, but now down three. Do they go for three? Well, I think if you can go quick enough, because you still have another timeout, I think you can take an opportunity to, you have to, especially, you know, you're going to still make it a one possession game regardless. Um, I think they would look for the three if they can get it, but I, I, you don't have to have one. That's the big thing about having that extra timeout that they've saved that you can't advance it again. Virginia does have another foul to give here still, so if they're in trouble, they don't like it, they can start with it. I want to clarify something I said earlier. Amor's 39 points is the most for Virginia Tech in an ACC game anywhere, not just here. Amor, a deep three. The rebound pulled down. It's Kamara Johnson. She's back. No, timeout. There is a timeout called by Coach Mox in Virginia. The Cavaliers with the ball and the lead. 14 seconds to go. Coach Mox was moving quick towards half court to get that timeout called. I mean, even pregnant, she still got some good speed when she needs it over there. This is a good look. A little bit tough shot because of the extra defender. She got a pretty good look at it. Almost had the offensive rebound, great scramble, and then the timeout call before the foul there. The only other time that Virginia Tech lost back-to-back -back games this season was in mid-January. They lost on the road at Florida State and then on the road at Duke. Now they had to finish their regular season with two on the road, lost Thursday at Notre Dame, and now on the ropes here in Charlottesville. Given the nature of how the game went when Kitley got injured, they have acquitted themselves fairly well in some areas uh, on the offensive end of finding some different ways to score. The problem is on the defensive end, they've put Virginia on the free throw line a lot and that makes it tough to, to pull out a game on the road. Grinnell, an 86% free throw shooter. I know why she's out on the floor. She gets fouled, she'll head to the line. Just two points in the game for Sam Brunel. A chance to try and seal the deal. Well, the interesting part will be here whether they use their timeout or they try to go quick. And Virginia Sam, Tech. who was reminiscing about her first time watching a Virginia women's basketball game, she's come a long way, hasn't she? 22 years later, she steps to the free throw line with a chance to put this one away and pick up what would be an absolutely massive win for the that's Cavaliers. A, that's a young hooper right there. <laughs> Went away for a little while, played three years at Notre Dame, and then came back to her home state from Rutgersville, Virginia. There, there's, there's nothing sweeter either as a, as a senior day player to win a big game like this on your home court. You can enjoy senior day. It's just what, what a way to finish uh, your career at home. See some Sam fans in the stands. Virginia Tech, once again, oh timeout, inbounded. Players spread all over the floor. Interesting look on this inbound. Yeah, Virginia almost had six players on the floor, and they had to get somebody off. Amor steps back. It is still alive. Sunil has it and was fouled. That's a good foul for Virginia. They had one to give, so now Virginia Tech down five. It's not happening, folks. Virginia Tech will have it under the basket. Eck has not scored a point, and that won't change here. Point five seconds stand between Virginia and victory. Just a great all-around 